Police in Kansas City have charged an 84-year-old 80, white man accused of shooting a black teenager outside of his home. That was last week on Thursday. Police say Andrew Lester fired two shots at 16-year-old Ralph Yarl twice through his glass door. Lester claims he thought the teen was attempting to rob his home. The teen was trying to pick up his twin brothers from a friend's house but went to the wrong address. His mother spoke with Gail King on CBS Mornings. He was like, okay, I'm going to pick them up. And he didn't he mistake the street for the terrace. So he went and it was 1100. That was the house address. And he went and rang the doorbell. And he was supposed to stay outside. And his brothers were supposed to run outside, get in the car, and they, and they come home. And that was what was supposed to happen. And while he was standing there, his brothers didn't run outside, but he got a couple of bullets in his body instead of a couple of twins coming up out and giving him a hug. Ralph Yarl was wounded in the head and the arm, but he is recovering at home. His family hopes that he recovers soon and that there's no impact to his brilliant music and academic career. And in upstate New York, a man has been charged with murder for killing a woman who was in a car that accidentally turned into his driveway over the weekend. 20-year-old Caitlin Gillis was shot and killed on Saturday. She was a passenger in a car with friends. The group went to a wrong address in Hebron, New York. Officials say no one tried to leave the car or even approach the house prior to the shooting. 65-year-old Kevin Monahan is accused of firing at least two shots at the vehicle as it attempted to leave the property. He is now facing a second-degree murder charge for Gillis's death. Now, both the New York and Kansas City shootings are raising questions about stand-your-ground laws. In both cases, innocent, unarmed people were shot for visiting the wrong address. Kasia Early joins us now. She is a criminal defense attorney and former public defender. She's also the owner and founding attorney at Early Law Firm. Okay, let's talk about these two cases of people who were, could claim that they were trying to protect their property. Uh, that's what these stand your ground laws or castle doctrine laws are all about. But, you know, we're seeing cases of people who were completely innocent, who were not trying to break in who it doesn't seem that they were threatening in any way the homeowners uh, from, from what we're seeing. Uh, talk to us. Are these justified? I mean, can a lawyer claim that? Well, it depends. In these two circumstances in Kansas City, as well as New York, you have the Castle Doctrine, where you have the right to defend your property, whether it's your vehicle or your home, in uh, the place that you're supposed to be, inside of your home, um, as long as there's a reasonably held belief that there is death or serious bodily harm to your person. So that burden shifts from the prosecution to prove beyond a reasonable doubt to the defendant in this case to prove that they had a reasonable belief that they were under serious harm from the person that was shot. Uh, Casey, uh, I'm wondering how do stand your ground laws actually hamper prosecutors? Though you say um, that the that the shift of uh, presumption of uh, changes from the defendant to uh, the prosecution in cases like this, it seems like the people who are taking this action feel empowered under these laws to be able to shoot anyone who comes into their existence because they feel threatened, even if in the case of Ralph Yarl, it's a kid ringing the doorbell and expecting his twin brothers to come out. Yeah, although they may feel like they feel threatened, again, that burden shifts from the prosecution uh, to the defense to show that they had a justified reason. So they have to have this reasonable belief. So was it reasonable in the case in Kansas City that Mr. Lester shot through the door of uh, this young teenager? He would have to basically put up a defense and, and basically explain his state of mind and where was the threat. Uh, did he ring the doorbell? Was he trying to pry into the home? Did he lift up a window? If he's unable to prove th uh, th that this young child had uh, the means and the ability to carry out a threat, if any, then he will be found guilty of the charges. You know, one of the things I was covering this story uh, this week, and, and one of the things that I keep 
seeing people on social media commenting and that I had as a question, we heard from the chief of police that they were waiting uh, after the 24 hour investigating investigative hold. They were waiting to make an arrest asking for a statement from the victim, which, of course, in many cases, the victim cannot give a statement. Why wasn't Andrew Lester arrested? Why was he released after that 24-hour hold? Well, we hope that the officers were completing their investigation and making sure that they uh, spoke to all of the potential witnesses that were around. We know that the alleged victim was sedated and in the hospital and unable to give a statement. However, there were witnesses that heard these gunshots, and there was evidence that the homeowner shot through the glass door. There was no evidence of forced entry. There was no evidence of a potential burglary in place. So we do believe that the officers had sufficient evidence to proceed, but I also believe that it was the outcry of the public when this story uh, hit social media yeah. and um, turns out that this alleged victim was completely innocent and unfortunately rang the, rang the doorbell of the wrong home. And just very quickly about the charges, because he was charged with assault, uh, not attempted murder. Why not attempted murder? Well, according to the prosecutor, he claimed that uh, the assault would have a greater uh, punishment. However, he can be charged. Uh, the prosecution can always amend their information, add additional charges. In this case, he can also obviously would have been charged with murder. Um, thankfully, uh, the alleged victim in this case did not succumb to his injuries, but he can also be charged with reckless endangerment because it was substantial risk of death, um, not only to the alleged victim, but to others. And this could possibly also be a federal hate crime uh, if race was at issue. Yeah. Which the prosecutor said... Uh it, it was. Well, and we are so grateful that Ralph is back home with his family, but obviously are, are also mourning uh, the death and with sympathy for Caitlin Gillis's family who did not make it. Casey Early, thank you. Thank you for having me.